This conference will now be recorded. Let's begin with non-leading lecture today. Any ledger, any currency that you want to create in SAP, S4 HANA, there is only single transaction code, which is your FINSC underscore ledger. Okay, this is the only one T code wherein you can update the currencies of your company code and ledgers of your company code. Both leading and non-leading are executed in the same transaction code, FINSC underscore ledger. Now what I am going to do here, I am going to define a non-leading ledger. For that, let me access this FINSC underscore ledger. Log into SAP. FINSC underscore ledger. Okay, when you're on FINSC underscore ledger, your intention is to create a non leading ledger. Do not copy any ledger for creating a non-leading ledger. Clear? Be very, very specific with this point. Never copy an existing ledger to create a non-leading ledger. If you are creating a non-leading ledger by copying an existing ledger, you are doing a mistake. Okay. So always go click on a new entry. But before I click on a new entry, before I check. Before that, let us check if our decide two digit non-leading ledger code is available or not for Dell we thought that we will create a DL Dell ledger let me go to D series so there is already a ledger called DL DN is also there okay so I'll simply put D1 as our non-leading ledger so go to new entries but this problem comes only in your practices servers. But when you're on a real project, none of this will be there except your system predefined leading ledger. You will have that freedom to select whatever the two digit code that you want for your ledger when you're in a real project because no practice data will be there on it. Here you'll have to compromise in certain things just because this is a shared server. New entries. Let's assume that we are creating a D1. Now remember if you create a non-leading ledger called a D1 or any two digit, this will be common for all your company codes. The way you're telling if you have five company codes, if I ask you what is the leading ledger of a five company codes, your answer is only one zero L for all five company codes. Is that correct? Five company codes yeah. will use same leading ledger in the similar way five company codes will use the same non-leading ledger. Okay, you're not going to create five different non-leading ledgers. Instead, you will be creating only one non-leading ledger assigning five company codes to your non-leading ledger. Okay, so I'll put D1. I'll say D-E-G-R non-leading ledger enter for non-leading ledger nothing is needed you just put ledger code description this is not a leading ledger i am not ticking this if you tick this becomes leading if you don't tick this becomes non-leading and ledger type is predefined standard what is extension ledger we will discuss later on and extension ledger type we are not using this as an extension ledger so this is always a standard journal entries. This is not underlying ledger for any ledger, which means you're not copying data from any ledger. And nothing is needed. Only two parameters, ledger code and ledger description 
will give you a proper non-leading ledger. Give these two, click on save first. enter enter now the moment i created a ledger i clicked on save there is a message coming ledger group d1 is created only with ledger d1 so ignore this we have just created a ledger non-leading ledger with d1 when you create any new ledger system automatically creates the same code as ledger group Okay, you don't have to specifically create a ledger group. Your ledger is automatically treated as a ledger group in SAP. Say, okay, this is giving an information that system has also created ledger group with D1. Okay, now non-leading ledger is created. Assuming you have five company codes or n number of company codes in your organization, you are going to create only one non-leading ledger. Create your non-leading ledger if you just move this a little right side you will find two settings company code settings for the ledger accounting principle for the company code first thing that we have to do is we need to assign our company codes to this non-leading ledger if you have five company codes you'll have to add five company codes if you have only one company code add only one company code the way you are adding your first company code the same settings exactly are applicable for all your company codes what I'm going to do here is select the non-leading ledger, double click on company code settings for the ledger. If I double click here, you will get the list of company codes here. Currently, no company code is assigned with non-leading ledger D1. Add a new entry. When I click on new entry, it is asking me to input company code. What I'm going to do, I am going to assign my company code. The moment I put my company code, let's see what information system is populating. Our company code is what? DEIN. I'll put DEIN. I'll hit enter. The moment I hit enter, sudden information is auto populated. Fiscal year variant is coming. Posting period variant is coming. Company code currency is coming. Group currency is coming. From where local currency is coming, this is coming from your company code OX15. And from where your group currency or global currency 30 is coming, this is coming from your controlling area. Now, these two currencies are directly coming from company code and controlling area. If you see this fiscal year variant, it is picking K4. This K4 fiscal year variant is by default coming from your leading ledger. Anything that you are assigning to your company code is representing leading ledger. Currently for your company code, there is Jan to December fiscal year assigned. That fiscal year is by default coming into your non-leading ledger. Similarly, your posting period variant DEIN. This is also assigned to your company code. Anything that is assigned to your company code will represent leading ledger. By default, the system is transferring data from leading ledger to non-leading ledger the moment you put your company code and hit enter. Now, according to our requirement, do we need non-leading ledger for Indian company code fiscal year as Jan to December or April to March? April to March. You April. want April to March. You have to change the fiscal year variant here for April to March. What is the standard fiscal year variant? V3? V3. Put this V3 here. Okay, this is just giving a message. We know that we are changing the fiscal year. Okay. Next one, posting period variant. DEIN is created to control your leading ledger posting periods. For controlling non-leading ledger posting periods, you need to create one more posting period variant. Before we save this, before we assign it, open one more window. Create posting period variant screen. O B B O. Add a new entry. First one when we created, we created it with company code. D E I N and you put D E I N posting period variant leading ledger. This here 
I'll put DEIN posting period variant D1. I'll put DEIN posting period variant D1. D1 I am representing my non-leading ledger. Here I'll put DE. D1. Okay. I'll put DED1. You can put any two digits of your choice. Any two digits of your choice you are going to put for your non leading ledger. So I have put DED1 because we had only one company code. If you have multiple company codes, you can design any logic to identify this is your company code. These are the posting period variants. Let's save this. Now we created second posting period variant with DED1 representing non-leading ledger. Now once you create posting period variant, next option is to assignment. To do the assignment, what we did OBBP. In OBBP, if I go to company code DEIN, there is already one posting period variant. Now in the last session, we discussed anything that you are assigning to your company code is this representing leading or non-leading? Leading. Leading, sir. Leading. Company leading. code assignment is representing leading ledger. But now what we are doing is we are doing another posting period variant mapping for non-leading ledger. Anything related to non-leading ledger will be assigned directly to the non-leading ledger. Because if you change from DEIN to DED1, leading ledger will become DED1 non-leading ledger you have to change the assignment now tell me should i assign this second posting period variant for company code or for non-leading ledger directly non-leading ledger directly you'll have to assign this directly to the non-leading ledger i'll come here if i open the drop down i must find de d1 If you are not able to find DED1, which means when we are on this screen, DED1 was not there. Right? When we are on this screen, we created it. Data is not refreshed. I'll try to press enter once. And let me try to open this. Still, this is not reflecting. So, what I'll do, I'll save this first as it is. enter just come back one level come back reopen the screen so that the data will get refreshed it will display the new posting period variant that is created enter our new non-leading ledger was d1 select d1 take this Go to company code settings. Enter. Here fiscal year variant is currently correctly showing April to March. Posting period variant we need to update DED1. Now is this showing DED1? Posting period variant D1 ledger. Take this. Press enter. Now at ledger company code level are we able to assign different fiscal year different posting period? Correct. Huh? Similarly, for any other company code, let's say if you are using D1 for Australia company code, here in this D1 Australia company code level, you are going to put your July to June or June to May fiscal year variant, the respective posting period variant. At company code level, with non-leading ledger combination, you are going to do the different company code assignments. Okay. Now next one for this we have to assign accounting principle. This non-leading ledger for company code DEIN we are using for the purpose of Indian Companies Act. Click on this accounting principle. Add a new entry. We have created Dell Group ICA accounting principle DGIC. I'll put this hit enter. 
This is Dell Group Indian Company Act Accounting Principle. If we go back to company code settings again, this is what it shows. If you have a requirement to add multiple currencies, let's say currently we are using only two currencies, company code currency, group currency. If you have any additional requirement to add further currencies, you can click on this plus currency here or add next currency. You can put currency code and the respective currency will be automatically assigned to your company code. Clear? We will define the additional currencies later on because first we have to understand the basic functionality with group currency and company code currency. If you understand this logic, this is simple and straightforward. I am going to save this now. Save, enter. Okay, this is how we create a non-leading ledger and we assign the respective fiscal year, posting period and accounting principle to it. Any doubt in this non-leading ledger creation? Can we add multiple accounting principle under one ledger? You can add. You have the option here, right? But okay. you will be adding more than one accounting principle only for the asset accounting purpose. Otherwise, strictly one accounting principle. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we need to assign this to the ledger group, this accounting principle? Is that necessary? No, that is necessary only for the asset accounting point of view. Okay. Okay. Now this is your non-leading ledger creation and your fiscal year posting period currency assignment to it. Is this confusing or simple, straightforward to understand non-leading ledger creation? Simple, sir. Right. So if you Actually, have sir, additional, uh, so can I ask? Uh, in this screen, uh, the, the screen which we are showing, uh, we are getting, there is a field called accounting principle, okay? And on the left hand side also, there is a field accounting principle for ledger and company code. What is the difference between these two fields? He, if, you ask, if you are using only one accounting principle, you can directly put this here. Okay. Okay, I can directly put, what is that? DG IC. I can put here also. Okay. Okay, this represents your main accounting principle used for this. But as I said, for the asset accounting purpose, we will be using two accounting principles to meet the asset accounting prerequisites. This is your main accounting principle used for it. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, one question, sir. Sir, if yes. we have like a, five company codes in five different countries with the same group, will be creating one non-leading ledger only or else will be creating uh, sufficient for the five company codes? One non-leading ledger only. Here if you see D1 non-leading ledger, DEIN company code, let's say you have another company code. I'll be adding another company code, let's say DEUS. Ledger is changing or ledger remains same? Ledger is remaining same? Yes, sir. Ledger is the same? Company code is changing for this company code. You put your fiscal year variant. You put your posting period variant. You put your accounting principle. Let's say this is using gap. Now at company code level, you are able to change the complete information of the ledger. Yes, yes, yes sir. Right. If company code is Dell India, fiscal year is different. Posting period is different. Accounting principle is different. Currencies may be different. But if it is Dell US, 
fiscal year, posting period, accounting principle, currencies may be different. Similarly, Dell Australia or any other company of Dell or any of your country, depending on your country, you are going to change all these parameters. But under same ledger, we are not going to create separate ledger for each company code. Got Clear? It. Sir, at the, yeah, at the reporting level, if we need to extract the report from non-leading ledger, means we need, we'll be identifying with the help of company code only. Correct. Because when you are posting any transaction, you are going to post the transaction at company code level. If your transaction is posted at company code level, your report is also extracted at company code level. Yeah, clear, sir. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Sir, if we want to check that how many company codes have been assigned to one non-leading ledger, then we have to check that. Here only you will check. I'll come back from this. No. Let's say FINSC underscore ledger. Now first what I will show, I will show how we are going to check how many company codes are assigned to leading ledger. If you understand how the number of company code assignment is seen at leading ledger, it is 100% the same you are going to check for your non-leading ledger. I am going to select the ledger for which I want to check the company codes. Just come and click on company code settings for the ledger. It will give you the list of company codes. Assuming this is your non-leading ledger, you are using five company codes. It is going to display five records only. At each record, you will be able to see currencies, global currency, if there are any additional currencies, fiscal year, posting period variant, Accounting principle is not there. Accounting principle you will be able to see when you go inside. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you go to our non-leading ledger, since we are using only one, if you open D1, click on company code setting, directly it will show the list. But the moment you put second company code, it will not display this screen. It will give you the list of company codes. You need to double click on it to come to this page. Since there is only one record, directly this is giving you this screen. Okay. All right. Come back. Now this is your non-leading ledger creation. In this what we have to mention, we'll have to mention fiscal year assignment. Next one posting period assignment group currency assignment and additional currency assignment next one accounting principle assignment this is what we need to check from the non-leading ledger first one is your fiscal year assignment if i open this in non-leading ledger First thing is your fiscal year assignment. Next one is your posting period assignment. We have listed fiscal year, posting period. Next one, group currency, additional currency, accounting principle. If we come here, group currency, additional currencies, accounting principle. Anything else we have assigned? Only this much? Okay, this functional currency is used for a different purpose. Let's say 
this is in which country india right del india is an indian india country in india which is your official currency inr so your company code currency for india is inr but for your legal reporting purpose let's say you want to submit your reports to your official reporting purpose maybe in dollar or in any other currency in that case you are going to put the functional currency this will represent your official reporting currency this is only to meet the country specific requirement but in this company code you are going to submit or you are going to prepare all your financial reports in some other currency apart from local currency in such cases you will be using functional currency i'll explain on the functional currency separately with a different requirement okay these points will have to mention in the non leading lecture once non leading lecture is completed next thing currency conversion settings next thing that we need to do is currency conversion settings this currency conversion settings are needed if you are using second currency are we using second currency or not yes we are using second currency our second currency is group currency us dollar now how this second currency will have to be used if you see here first local currency it has currency type 10 which is your company code currency inr now this company code currency is converted from source currency 00 00 represents your transaction currency or document currency in sap in short how your company code currency is converted based on what currency document currency Best company currency. code currency is always converted based on the document currency or okay. transaction currency this cannot be changed this is sap standard we have no option to change this okay if your transaction currency is euro your company code currency is inr system is going to convert inr from euro if your transaction currency is australian dollar your company code is inr system is going to convert australian dollar to inr depending on the transaction currency your local currency is automatically derived this is straight forward but on the other side if you are using any currency apart from local currency in short group currency hard currency or index based currency any other additional currency you can use up to eight freely definable currencies in, in s4 hana apart from these two currencies so total 10 currencies will be used if you have any additional currency for your company code you need to decide you need to inform to the system on what basis the additional currency will be converted it has to be a fixed rule defined in your configuration setting if you see here this source currency type is missing or or it is assigned this is missing if this is missing system will not understand how to convert to dollars right you have to define in the configuration whether your dollar will be converted from company code currency or from the transaction currency in majority of the cases we will be converting group currency from local currency okay to define this currency conversion setting on the same screen finsc underscore ledger you have an option called currency conversion settings for company code do you see this setting currency conversion settings for company code double click on this setting enter when you come to this screen you will find different options here ignore whatever is currently there don't get confused by looking at this existing data straight away go to new entries okay straight away go to new entries what is our company code del india put dein next one 
this is your currency type what is your additional currency that you are using group currency what is the group 30. currency code in sap 30 30 30 30. Group currency code is 30. If you get confused, just open the drop down. This will give you the list. We are using additional currency as group currency 30. Double click on this. The moment you hit enter, it will display what is the group currency assigned to your client. Group currency is dollar. Now you have to define how this group currency is to be converted from which currency. Here you will find source currency type for converting this group currency dollar open the drop down here you have two options right this source currency is always the list of existing currencies of your company code one is your document currency the other one is company code currency you will have to decide either to convert from document currency or to convert from company code currency you cannot use both it is strictly from document currency or from company code currency. In general, which currency we will be using? Document or company code? Company code currency. We will be using a company code currency. Let's proceed with the standard procedure company code currency only. Enter this. Enter. Uh, sir, can you tell that again? I didn't understand. Okay. Now, in your company code, we are going to have the additional currency as group currency US dollar. For every transaction that you are posting in your company code, you want the system to update your local currency INR plus equivalent dollar for each and every transaction. For every transaction for system to update US dollar, how system has to convert? Whether you want system to convert dollar based on the company code currency or based on the your transaction currency based on this configuration rule system is going to follow a standard instruction and it will convert so in most of the scenarios we will be using a company code currency so for you to understand sign. this let's say i am posting a document here Assuming this, I am posting a document in Euro. Assuming my company code currency is INR. Even though my company code currency is INR, can I post the document in Euro? Possible or not possible? Possible. This is possible. But my company code currency is INR. But what my requirement is, I have additional currency called dollar. In this case, how system should convert your dollar? Should system convert dollar considering euro or considering INR? You may be posting one more transaction, maybe in theorems, AED. In this case, you want a dollar to be converted from AED or from INR. Because this document currency is not fixed, depending on the nature of transaction, this keeps on fluctuating. Correct, understood. So we have to define a fixed rule in the system so that the dollar value that you are seeing is constant because you are going to generate reports at the dollar, right? With dollar currency, you are going to prepare your reports, submit your reports. To do it, you need to have a fixed logic on what basis the dollars are arriving. If you have a const, if you do not have a fixed logic, it is difficult for us to understand why our report numbers are not tallying because at the end of the month what we are going to do you are going to only check at the closing number with the exchange rate if i say my closing exchange rate for dollar is around 80 rupees whatever the value i am getting in dollars i will be dividing this by 80 i want to see the equivalent amount in my inr is that correct I'll, let me put this in the Excel. This may sound a little tricky, confusing now, but once we are on the transaction, all these confusions will automatically rectify it. Okay, you will not have any more confusions on this once we enter transaction posting. Let's say I look at my 
balance sheet in my balance sheet i am looking at assets under asset let's say i am checking my bank balance my bank balance i'll say inr i'll say dollar because i am generating report in both currencies correct local reporting and group reporting is this correct correct if i say my bank balance in inr is around 2 lakhs considering this my closing month end exchange rate mer for the month is 80 rupees now assuming here i am getting let's say around i'll put this divided by 80 2500 if system is giving me 2387 if this is giving 2387 now when i am looking at my balance sheet at the end of the month my assumption is on your balance sheet or on your pnl you have to represent what is your month end exchange rate is this correct if you are showing numbers in both currencies you must represent the exchange rate on your financials considering this rate we have converted all our dollars or any other currencies if i put my month end exchange rate in short mer as 80 rupees what i am going to do i am going to verify simply i'll take my total inr i'll divide this by my exchange rate according to month end exchange rate my 2 lakh inr bank balance is supposed to be 2500 but is this 2500 no this is not 2500 which means is my number correct no it's wrong this is not correct this may be coming from different different transaction your balance sheet is only the sum of the transaction value if i would have posted let's say some 20 entries right sum of 20 entries is your 2 lakh sum of 20 entries is 2387 but according to your month end exchange rate your 2 lakh rupees is equivalent to 2500 dollars whereas at the transaction level if you do a total it is coming to 2387 now if i submit this report to anybody to a auditor to a management cfo or any any one person what they are going to do they are only going to do one calculation they'll take calculator or they'll go to the excel sheet they'll simply put is equal to this divided by your exchange rate 2500 this is not tallying number is not correct they are simply reject this stating your numbers are not correct in group currency now in order to meet this in order to fix these kind of things you have two options called foreign currency valuation foreign currency translation anybody heard these two functionalities yes sir yes sir right these two are your month end activities to meet this requirement if this is not tallying with your month end exchange rate using your foreign currency translation system will bring this 2387 as 2500 this is using your translation so that your reporting is correct so we will be executing these programs practically by taking the numbers like this i will show you the numbers from the gl accounts we will execute we will configure currency translation currency valuation things and then we will practically take live examples of our company code our transactions we will change the exchange rates we will see how it is going to affect in our books and what financial entry system is going to post why we are posting these kind of entries we will practically understand clear at to meet all these kind of requirements when you are posting the actual transactions at the beginning we have to define the settings properly any setting that we are not defining properly but we have already posted the transactions later on it is not possible for us to rectify 
okay if you are working in a real environment when these kind of problems are happening it is not so easy to rectify because it will be a very big very high level escalation because your report is wrong when your report is wrong nobody can do anything am i correct unless you fix the report unless you make sure that everything is showing the proper number nobody is with you everybody will blame everybody will shout Uh, hi sir uh, i have a doubt here so during the yes. month end activity uh, like if there is a mismatch of the group currency amount so like which date will be considered for the posting or adjusting the amount during the month end sir month end date only month end date only okay month end date only amount received in the invoices or something like that and the month end date differs like uh, so there will be a mismatch again right to, for the balancing no when you are doing a month end there is no regular data entry you are going to carry carry out the month end activities only after freezing your regular data entry okay 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 let's say my month end is plus five working days if i say my month end is plus five working days mm -hmm. april closing is on what date may present may may 5 may yeah may 5 correct huh? yes may 5 now i may be freezing the transaction maybe on may 4 or i may be freezing my transaction on may 5th depending on your requirement on may 4th closing or on may 5th closing you will send out an official communication to all the users stating on 5th may at so and so time like your official closing time or your may 5th 12 o'clock in the night or when the calendar date changes to may 6th no transaction posting is allowed no user is supposed to record any transaction in april month once may 5th is completed you have option to record a transaction in april until may only until may 5th only strictly no user is going to post any transaction on the april month from may 6th onwards okay once you send out this email to the business users you are going to carry out your month end activities like posting of depreciation foreign currency valuation translation currency rate updation or accruals whatever it is when you carry out these activities no regular transactions are posted by the users if users are posting the entries you are carrying out month end activities at the same time there is a huge mismatch your closing numbers will go for a toss am i correct yes so that is why when you are carrying out month end activities no regular data entry is made you will freeze the regular data entry and then you will carry out month end activities clear yeah yes sir sir, sir what is the effect of it like uh, every day there will be thousands of transactions uh, is uh, happening in our company so if you are freezing uh, this activity then is it have any impact on business no when we say we are freezing it on what date we are freezing on 5th of may yes on 5th of may you are freezing only april entries okay may entries will go as usual user is not able to post may entries sorry user cannot post entries with april dates but user can as usual post the entries with may date may entries have no effect effect restriction will come only when user is trying to select the last month which is april because you have closed officially for april month now in this scenarios you cannot control every user am i correct all you can do is you can send out an official circular to all the business users or for all the account heads stating on this date at this particular time we are closing the period april will be officially closed 
but still there may be chances some or the other user might pass the entry because for you to carry out April month you need to April period open am I correct I cannot do month end by closing April is that correct yes sir. because April month end entries will have to be posted in April only but I want only these closing entries to be rectified or this closing entries to be recorded in April not the regular entries in such kind of a scenarios the other day we have used one validation for closed period entries for specific users right so such kind of a validations you can put in place that only your closing team the team who is going to run the month end activities only those users can pass the entry in April period otherwise it will not allow any user to record the entry clear right, yeah thank you okay now here for currency conversion setting one minute let me check if the session is active okay this is active now this is our dollar we need to decide our dollar is to be converted based on company code currency or based on document currency this thing you'll have to decide at the beginning only later on we cannot change this setting in general we will be using your group currency conversion always happens from local currency okay your group currency conversion always happens from local currency here you are going to put local currency which is 10 now clear your dollar is always extracted or converted based on company code currency any doubt in this this point is clear yes sir now you have different different exchange rate types in sap considering which exchange rate type you want to convert your dollars normally we will be using average rate or standard exchange rate type called as m even in real environment you will be using m only here also you are going to use m next one which date to be considered for converting if you look at this transaction posting you will have three dates one is document date the other one is posting date I may have another date as translation date this date I may say 15 now I have three different dates 10th April 21st April 15th April but for these three dates there may be three different exchange rates possible or not For these three dates there may be three different exchange rates but we have to give a fixed rule in the system so that only on that date whatever the rate is applicable system is going to consider in majority of the cases we will be converting based on posting date what date? 15th we will be using posting date here also let us define translation date is your posting date this is one time setting defined at the beginning of your company code creation and later on we are not supposed to change these settings I'll take posting date clearer in short your dollar is converted from local currency INR from exchange rate type M for the date considering posting date any doubt in this setting all right let me save this sir one quick question sorry to stop yeah yeah awesome. sir uh, we'll be converting uh, group currency from the help of local currency right sir that will be the Correct. only translation like valuation will be done but what in case uh, uh, like uh, as per the client requirement we have made a uh, document currency as INR and uh, or else uh, some uh, pounds we will be converting uh, it into local currency what if may in future he may transact like uh, transaction uh, start transaction with uh, uh, Dubai currency or else uh, uh, Singapore currency like how it will be converted at uh, local currency
first one is your let's say I'll put document or transaction currency second one is your company code or local currency third one is your group currency now this company code currency is fixed correct huh? because you are defining what is your company code currency in your configuration yes sir both will be fixed group and local this is fixed INR this is also fixed dollar clear clear sir. now this document currency is flexible this is not fixed this is subject to change based on the nature of transaction true sir yes sir Right. Let's say this may be AED, this may be INR, this may be Euro, this may be AUD, this may be SGD. The list goes on based on your business transactions. There is no limit for it. There is no rule for it. Now, this is the sequence of your currencies. This is always first currency, second currency, third currency. Now, when you are creating a transaction when you are posting a transaction you will be giving this input this is your first input okay and when you are on the first input let's say you have given AED system will convert your INR from AED whatever the currency available in your transaction clear huh? yes sir that is clear this is standard conversion based on document currency now on the other side when it comes to your group currency this is dollar but above dollar I have two currencies one is my document currency the other one is company code currency yes sir now system will get confused here system will not understand which one I should take should I take AED and convert dollar or should I take INR and then convert to dollar here to eliminate this confusion you are going to maintain this setting in this setting you are going to tell the system whenever you are converting dollar or my group currency always take currency type 10 which is your company code currency if you maintain this setting system will convert this always from INR to dollar this is fixed yes sir this is what happens sir uh, this both very well uh, I got understood but uh, my doubt is uh, how the system knows uh, that uh, local currency to convert with the uh, uh, AED what the price is currently running and what the ESGD price is running how the system knows to convert local currency for these price transactions we are doing the tra tra like uh, currency conversions only with the group currency right correct so there is a table called taker what is the table ticker ticker now everybody is with me right nobody is getting confused am i correct correct sir ticker okay yes sir let me know if anybody is having any confusion because we may be talking something which may not be exactly relevant here so there is a table called ticker Ticker table is updated in OB08 T code. You know what is OB08? Current currency update. Exchange rate update. I'll go to OB08. this is what stored in the ticker table now let me go to ticker table SC16N is the transaction code to check the table on SC16N pass the table name T C U R R okay this is your exchange <laughs> sorry this is your exchange rates I'll put exchange rate type M 
I'll put from currency, let's say AED to currency as INR. Clear? I'll just click on execute. Is there any exchange rate value currently in the table for this combination? No, sir. No. No. If there is no exchange rate found in this table, system will not convert the rate. It will throw an error stating there is no exchange rate in the table. For example, let's say this time I'll put USD to INR. If I click on execute, there are exchange rates available for this combination. Yes. <clears throat> is there only one single rate or there are multiple records? Multiple records. There are multiple, multiple records. records. Now, when there are multiple records, system is going to get confused which one to take. It, system should have a clear instruction based on which it will go and pick the rate. For that, on our setting, we have maintained something called, where is it? Here. You have mentioned the translation date, what date to be taken for converting. What is our requirement? Which date? Transaction date. Posting date. Posting date. You told system to convert considering posting date. While posting a transaction, you have three dates. Documented date, posting date, translation date. From these three dates, which date system is going to consider? Posting date. What is the posting date? 21st April 2023. 21st April 2023. Okay, let me go to Ticker. Here, do you find a date called 21st? What is it, April? Current date. 21st. 21st April. In this, do you find a date called 21st April or not? In this table, valid from, you'll have to look at this column. Do you find it 21st valid. April? We are valid for 30th April. From 30th April. Right. 30th for April the, we have a date. Correct. For the exact date, do you find a rate or there is no rate on the exact date? No rate on the exact date. There is no rate for the exact date. Now your exchange rate is always contains valid from not valid to. If I show you this, let's say the first one for the April, if I see this is valid from when? 5th April. Yeah, 5th April. Now when is the next date after 5th April? 6th April. 7th April. 6th April. 13th April. Yes. So this rate is valid only on 5th because on 6th there is another rate. When the calendar date becomes a 6, it will take this. If the calendar date becomes a 7, it will take 7 because on 7 there is a rate. If calendar date is 8, this will take 8. If calendar date is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, until, sorry, until 12, only this rate is applicable because next rate is applicable from 13. From 8 to 12, this is applicable. You got the logic? Yes, sir. Got that. After 8, there is no date until, which means there is no change until 13. Until system finds another record, it will take the latest record for that date. Now, from 13th onwards, till when this 82 is applicable? From 13th till when? 30th April. From 13th yeah, till till 29th because on 30th yeah. there is a new rate. Now in our scenario for 21st April, which rate is considered? 82,000. I mean uh, 13th rate. 82 rupees. Correct? Yeah. Huh? System is going to consider 82 rupees. Clear with this? Yes. Now let me open one more screen. Okay, here I'll put exchange rate simulator EWCT. 
what is the exchange rate simulation EWCT in SAP enter this assuming I want to know what is the exchange rate for dollar to INR on 21st April 2023 in SAP let's open this Sir, my doubt is for uh, how the transaction currency will be converted to either local or group currency. Like transaction currency may vary or uh, depend on the countries. Like how, however, you may transact with the currency. So on that doubt, like uh, we are converting only, we are uh, like making the settings only for the group currency, right, sir, at present. Yeah, I'll show that. Server is down. Okay. Look at this currency type 10. Okay. Can you change this currency type 10? No. Or this is grayed out. This is grayed it's out. Fixed. Company code currency is fixed. This is grayed out because this is settings defined at global level. These are updated by SAP. These are standard SAP settings. Next, I'll go to global currency conversion settings. In this, if you see this currency type 10 company code currency, this is always updated based on document currency. Yes, sir. Right. This is always updated based on document currency. This is updated based on what date? Posting date. This is based on transaction date transaction date or translation date do we have any option to change this i am already on change mode are we able to edit this freeze sir. Grayed out. these are frozen these are grayed out now whenever you record any transaction let's say Whenever you post any transaction, what you do is you are going to update this much only. Okay, I'll put let's say dollar. You are going to update this much only. Your translation date is by default extracted from posting date. Unless you put translation date manually, system is not going to take any value apart from posting date. Whatever the posting date that you have, that becomes your default translation date. Now this translation date is what considered for converting your local currency. Right. So this is fixed predefined by the SAP, which we cannot modify. If I come back to our. Let's say. Leading ledger. Our company code. D E I N. If I double click on this, enter. Earlier I showed that there is source currency 00. Here it was blank. Correct? Huh? Before we did the, the setting, we discussed here. Here it was blank. Yes. Sir. Right. At that time, here it was 00 because this is SAP standard. Your local currency is always extracted from document currency. This is fixed. We have no control on this and it is not possible to change this logic because your currency sequence is this one, two, three. This is your first input in the currency. Right, now the second currency in the sequence is company code. So when your company code currency is INR, let's say here it is AD, you must derive INR based on AD only any other option any other alternative we have no sir. no other alternative if I put my transaction in euro 
I need to convert INR from euro only. Now is this? Please be on mute. Is this fixed now, or I I can choose any other option? There is no other option. Whatever the transaction that you are posting, considering that a transaction currency only, my local currency will be derived. That is why there is no configuration for it. For this, there is no control for this. It will work according to the transaction currency to local currency. But when it comes to your group currency, group currency is at third position. Above group currency, there are two currencies. You need to define in the system clearly considering which currency your group currency will be converted. That is why for this one, since this is not system predefined, you have to define a parameter in this SAP considering document currency or considering local currency, your group currency will be converted. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Now to see this exchange rate simulator. Let me put this ticker table and then this one. Now on 21st, do you find any record on the ticker table exchange rate for the same date dollar to INR? Yes, no. No, sir. For the same date, you don't have, sir. For the same date, you don't have. But the logic is from date and then the next from date, the gap is used for the, the missing dates. From 13 till 29th, 82 rupees is used. Is my understanding correct? From 13th April okay. till 29th April, 82 rupees will be used. Now, let me put conversion date as 21st. I'll hit enter. How much system is taking? 82 rupees. Correct? Huh? If I change this, on 27, how much it should take? Same, 82 only. 82 only. If I change this to 30th? 87. The moment I change date 30th, because on 30th, there is a record. It has to check 87. Is this taking 87? Yes, sir. Right. If I put 6th April, for 6th April, what rate it should take? 80,000. Another rate. 79. 79. Is this taking 79? Right. That this is how system is going to take or determine the exchange rates. Clear? Now, let's come back to this. Here in currency conversion setting, what we have updated currency conversion settings for company code. Let me put this currency conversion settings for company code in this what record we have updated company code group currency to local currency right in short our group currency is always converted from local currency which is your company code currency based on m exchange rate on posting date so let me put here group currency dollar is always converted from local currency INR with M rate for posting date. on posting date 
Is this statement correct? Is this statement correct or any correction we need to make in this? Is no, correct. Correct. Yes, correct, right? Now this is about your non-leading ledger and your currency conversion setting. In FINSC underscore ledger, these are the two settings that we'll have to make. Let me save this record. Go back. Any doubt so far on this non-leading ledger creation and currency conversion settings? No, sir. Clear, right? Sir, a small doubt. Yes. Sir, normally in real time, on invoices, they are mentioning exchange rates. Here also, we are maintaining exchange rates uh, so which one will pick while processing? While creating the transaction, if you put exchange rate here, let's say in the system on this date, it is 82 rupees, correct? Huh? Yes. If I put this as 83, this transaction alone is converted with 83 rupees. If I put at the exchange rate in my transaction level, that exchange rate is final. If I don't put this system is going to take it from the taker table. But if you put the rate in the transaction itself, it will not refer taker table. But it will give you a message stating the rate that you have given manually rate that is there in the table are different. There is a deviation that percentage also it will mention at the bottom. Let's say what I'll do. I'll put 83 here. Now, when I hit enter, there is a message at the bottom. What is that message? 1.22% difference. Yes. It is telling that you are giving 83, but in the system for this state, only 82 is updated. It is giving a warning message. After seeing this also, if you proceed to create the transaction, that is user mistake. User will be questioned. Why did you proceed when you got the warning message? You cannot say I did not see system did not give any warning message. Correct? Huh? If your client says no, it is not working fine. What you are going to do? You are going to show this warning message to your client. After seeing this, if your client says no, we don't want any deviation. System should not allow strictly, but that will not be the requirement. In such cases, you will have to change this warning message to error message. What is this message number? Five two one two F. F five two one two. First two digits is your message class. Last after first two digits, whatever the number you have, that the message number. In which transaction code do we change the message control? In which T code? OB. Anybody remember OBA? What is this T code? OBA5. You go to OBA5. What is the message number? F5212. What is the message class in this? First two digits will represent your message class. I'll put F5. What is the message number? Add a new entry. 212. 212. Press error and then hit error. Clear? If you put this and then save it. Let's say I'll save it now. Currently, what kind of message is this error or warning? 
और वार्निंग राइट यूएस डॉलर I think we have some validation for US dollar. I'll change this AP20. Number range is missing because it is at this position currently. After this, it will come and finally it has to come to this field to give the error message. But for AP10, I think we put some validation. P10 for dollar I think we put a validation active active right that is where this is coming now see the same message coming with error now now can I proceed with this incorrect exchange rate or I cannot you cannot I cannot because earlier this was a warning message, but now we converted warning to error. Only two options: option number one, I have to change this to 82 manually. Option number two, I will leave this blank so that system automatically takes from your ticker table. Clear? Now let me delete this. Because we just put this for the testing purpose. I'm removing this. Any doubt so far on the non-leading ledger creation and currency conversion? Understood? So for suppose document currency is in the AUD, suppose. So we have to maintain exchange rate for Australian currency also, right? Yes. Any currency that you're Recording in your system, you need to make sure that the currency conversion is maintained in your OB08 or in your ticker table, it should be there. Because while posting, system is going to check the record in ticker. For that currency pair, if there is a record in ticker, it will consider and then convert. If not, it will give an error message. Sir, can we change it directly in production system that error message? No, error message is through configuration. Okay, in development only we have to do. Yes, you have to do in development. You need to test it whether it is working fine or not. Only then you'll have to transport it. Okay. Sir. Okay, Hello. all right then. Yeah. Yes. Sir, one minute. Uh, have one doubt. Uh, we have uh, in other currency. We can post that uh, document. Uh, just one minute earlier, you have seen that document. Correct. We can try it that with other currency. What will uh, it uh, will reflect reflect the error? Screen. If currency is not updated, if we can post in other currency other than USD in this document. What will the uh, error message will come then? Let's say if I put INR, no Not message INR. will come. Okay. Any other currency other than INR and USD? If I put, let's say, AUD. Okay. If I press enter, it is telling there is no exchange rate in the system for this currency pair. If you see this, okay, we... you are only giving AED, but system is telling you AED INR rate is missing. Okay. Because this is your first currency document. Your second currency is INR, local currency. So it is converting your local currency based on your base transaction currency AED. In the ticker table for this currency combination, there is no exchange rate. If there is any exchange rate updated, it will consider that date. If nothing is there, then you will get this error message. Okay, we can maintain uh, more than uh, 
two currencies in a ticker table also data yeah yeah you can maintain you can maintain on a daily basis also okay okay it is going to check currency combination exchange rate and date and this combination it will find the unique record and it will convert that data will be uh, maintained by uh, business users or uh, consultants sir business user your exchange rate is updated by the business user okay okay sir. clear yeah clear any other questions just to reiterate like uh, so if we enter a translation date so the translation date will be considered for the exchange rate conversion else it will take the posting date as standard right correct so if you want to change or if business requires that the uh, the conversion date should be considering the document date as such like can we change it as for the business date that can be changed only for group currency conversion not for the local currency conversion okay okay good okay for the local currency it is sap predefined we cannot change but for group currency it is user defined you can change whatever the date you want the ticker table we are using business users only that person will be defined no you will be updating the exchange rate in ob080 transaction yes whatever you update in ob08 will be stored in ticker table it will pick in automatically or every day you are entering in the, in the real time sir the exchange rate in real time table. right in real time most of the companies will not update the exchange rate on a daily basis they will update the exchange rate on a monthly basis let's say all your april transactions will be converted with march closing rate all your okay. april transactions are converted with march closing rate at the end of the april you are going to perform month end activities yes when you perform month end activities you have to perform two foreign currency related programs one is currency translation the other one is currency valuation so when your currency translation currency valuation is happening system is going to take april closing rate and it will restructure all the numbers according to april closing rate okay thank you sir okay. any other questions all right let me stop this recording